Hi, this is Kanna Babu. Today we'll discuss about state management techniques in ASP.NET because this is a very powerful topic in interview point of view. Generally, we already have the knowledge on web application. Web application means the application that can be deployed on web server and can be accessible via browser and internet. That type of applications are called as web applications. Generally, web applications are basically divided into two types. Static web application, dynamic web application. Static web application means the application whose output is common for all the users. The type of application is called a static web application. Is it clear? And the content of the application is common for all the users. Web application means multiple users will interact with the single application at a time. And the server will provide services to all the users. Mostly you can go for uh, any static websites like movie review websites or you can go for some W3 schools or any um, these type of websites, whoever will open that website, everyone will uh, get the same output. That type of application is called a static web application. Okay, for example here you see I will show you W3 schools and here also you can so when you open this one, everyone can uh, uh, see the content of that particular website and that content is common for all the users. That type of application is called as static web application. Dynamic web application means the application whose output will vary from user to user, location to location, from time to time, based on such to such. From one user to another user, the output will change. That type of application is dynamic web application. Okay. For example, if you take a Gmail, if I try to log into Gmail with my username and password, I can see my mails. And if you log in with your username and password, you can see your mails. So from one user to another user, the mails will change. So the data will change from one user to another user. So it is a dynamic web application. If you take uh, um, Facebook, if I log into Facebook with my username and password, I can see my friends list. If you log in, you can see your friends list. So from one user to another user, the output will what change. That is dynamic web application. Similarly, if you log in any Amazon, if I try to search any product in Amazon, based on my search, I can see the product details. Based on your search, you can see the product details. Means from user to user, based on search, the output will change. That is dynamic web application. So, like IRCTC, Flipkart, Amazon, these are the dynamic web applications. Dynamic web applications can be developed by using some server-side technologies like Java, .NET, PHP, Django, etc. So, whenever you develop any web application, the main purpose of web application is multi-user accessibility. So, multiple users can interact with the single application at a time. And, you can and that server will provide services to the users. So once when we develop any web application, we have to deploy the application on the web server. So two things you must have the knowledge. One is browser, other one is web server. So what is a web browser? Web browser is a software which is used to access the data from web server via internet. Web server will provide the services to the uh, clients like browsers, mobiles, etc. So whenever you develop any web application, we have to deploy that application on the web server. Then only the end user will access the application via browser and internet. Different types of uh, web servers are Apache, uh, JBoss, similarly IIS, these are different types of web servers. So let us see the client server architecture here. So here you can see client is nothing but browser. Server it comes of application, application comes of files. Okay, na? so the communication between this client and server is due to HTTP protocol. HTTP is hypertext transfer protocol. HTTP is a uh, used to create the communication between browser and server. HTTP will send the request to the server. Server will search for that particular file and it will send the response to the browser. So here the communication between client and server is due to HTTP protocol, hypertext transfer protocol. It's a communication protocol which is used to transfer the data between client and the server. So generally whenever client sends the request, web server will accept the request, process, generate the response, 
and forward the response to the browser. Here the communication between client and server is due to HTTP protocol. But this HTTP is a stateless protocol. Stateless means it will not maintain the state of the response either on the browser or on server. HTTP will consider every request as a fresh request. So whenever the request is going to the server, uh, it, the request should be processed and the response will be generated. But whenever client sends the second request, the previous response will be destroyed. That is the stateless nature actually. Okay. So because of the stateless nature, a lot of problems are there. First we will discuss that. What is the problem with this stateless nature? In regular or traditional web application development, any web application development you consider, the stateless nature will play the some problem, either you go for Java, or .NET, or PHP, etc. Okay, now what is the problem? Let us see. For example, here if you observe, I have... Here let us see one example. So here I open my Visual Studio Editor. Go to... So here let us assume that here I have taken one. Uh, this is my browser and this is my server. So here if you observe clearly, in browser I have four buttons are there. And uh, server, what is existing in server means server consists of application, application consists of what? Files, files consists of some code, some design, some code is there here. So generally, here if you observe clearly, this is one class, every page is a class. Here we have one variable, it is an instance variable, index. So the scope of instance variable is within the class. We can access the instance variable anywhere within the class. So this button one underscore click is a method. So four buttons means four methods. One button means one method. So now what will happen here? User will uh, click on button one. User will first of all open browser and enter the URL. Request will go to the server. File will exist in server and that file will be uh, output will be displayed in the browser. So the output will be designed. Now user clicks on button 1. So here button 1 underscore click will fire. It is a method. Request is going to the server. So here who will uh, accept the request? HTTP protocol will send the request to the server. And here initial x is 0. Uh, so here the output will be 5000 for the first button click. And whenever user clicks on button 2, request 2 going to the server. So when request 2 going to the server, Previously, as x is instance variable, here x is how much? 5000. When user clicks on button 2, here x is uh, 5000. 5000 plus 3000, it must be 8000. Similarly, when user clicks on button 3, when uh, here x is how much? 8000. 8000 plus 1000, so bill must be 9000. Is it clear? And when user clicks on button 4, request 4 will go to the server. Here the request will go to where? Server. Here x is how much? 9000 plus 10 rupees. It must be 9010 rupees. According to your C sharp knowledge, instance variable we can access anywhere within the class. This So my final output must be here 9010 rupees must be my output. But what is the problem in general web application development like ASP.NET or your uh, JSP or any other technologies. Here, the problem is with HTTP protocol. So whenever user clicks on button 1, request is going to the server and the bill is 5000 for the first request, no doubt. But whenever user clicks on button 2, the previous response will be destroyed because of stateless nature. So here x is how much? 0. So two items will, will be 3000. When user clicks on button, request 3 is going to the server. When request is going to the server, the old response is generated. Actually, here x must be 8000. But uh, as when user clicks on button 3, the old response 8000 will be destroyed. So x is 0. So bill is 1000 rupees. So total bill is 10 rupees because of this stateless nature. Did you understand? So ASP.NET works on HTTP protocol. HTTP is a stateless protocol. It will not maintain the state of the responses either on the browser or on server. Here the communication between client and server is due to HTTP protocol. The, it is like a gajani. HTTP will not maintain the old responses. If you want, I will show you the same example practically. Here you can see double click on button and write the code. Here I will try to take one variable, 
I have one class space here. I will declare one variable index, and uh, here I will write something like x is equal to x plus five thousand, and I want to display the output in the label label one dot text is equal to x dot two string. Is it clear? So copy this one, and here double click on button two, and here you can say x is equal to x plus three thousand. And again, double click on button three and write the code. Here, x is equal to x plus one thousand. And again, double click on button four and write the code. Here, x is equal to x plus ten rupees. So here, if you must observe the concept of uh, oops instance variable. Here, x is instance variable only because I declared inside the class. That is the reason instance variables will not work in your web application. Button one, button two, button three, and button four. Now here you see. Now when I press F5 and check the output, generally the values must maintain as it is instance variable. But here the values between multiple requests will not maintain because of ASP.NET stateless nature. It will not maintain the state of the responses either on the browser or on the server. So here you will get the output what uh, 10 rupees you will get. Means if you buy 10 tickets in Book My Show, three tickets in bookmyshow.com you have to pay money only for one item last item if you purchase five items in amazon you have to pay bill only for last item if you book three tickets in ircdc you have to pay bill only for last item here you see button 1 bill is 5000 button 2 3000 button 3 total bill must be 9000 rupees but here you are getting only 10 rupees that is final bill that is the problem with stateless nature So as a developer, it is our responsibility to maintain the state of the response. So when user clicks on button one, the question goes to the server. Response one is generated. That is five thousand. When user clicks on button two, uh, the response must be old five thousand plus three thousand. But actually, the problem is because of this HTTP stateless nature, the old response is destroyed. So, as a developer, it is our responsibility to maintain the state of the response, either on the browser or on the server. For that, we need to take the support of state management techniques. So, my responsibility is finally I want to get the bill nine thousand ten rupees. So, uh, to overcome this problem, so here uh, any web application we must uh, maintain the state of the data between multiple requests and responses. For that, we need to take the support of state management techniques so what is state management technique it is a mechanism of maintaining the responses uh, on either on browser or on the server between multiple client requests and responses so we these state management techniques are basically divided into two types one is client side state management technique other one is server side state management technique client side state management techniques are here you can see view state query stream Cookies, hidden fields. These four comes under client-side state management techniques. Server-side state management techniques are sessions, applications, and caching. Okay. So one technique to another technique. The main difference will be in the terms of scope. Uh, means we can maintain the values within the page, or from one page to another page, or within the website. Or uh, within a particular time period, like that, the differences will be there. Okay, so in the next video, we'll discuss about one by one technique, how to overcome the above problem. What we discuss the case study that we'll discuss in the next video. For more videos, try to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a nice day.